Hello, therapy talkers. It is your favorite therapist, Tammy and Pauline. I'm Pauline, though. <laughs> I'm Tammy. <laughs> You're Tammy. So today's topic is about major depressive disorder. We're going to spend more time on it, but just know there are absolutely different types of depression um, with severity um, changing over time. Um, and so before we get started today, of course, Tammy and I need to check in. So Tammy, this is the check-in I want to do today is something I, I do with clients um, once in a while. And it's basically, okay. what is one thing that has gone well for you in the past week? We'll keep it short. Yeah. Uh, I was able to get some landscaping done that needed to be done. Mm, okay. Okay. That's Super simple. Yeah. Pretty simple. Um, for me, it would be organizing. <laughs> organizing certain things. I'm a person who changes their closet up when a season changes. Me too. Yes. yes. So I did that. And then to. in addition, I organized some of the props you sent me, Tammy. <laughs> Is that one of the things that you have sitting behind you that I noticed was oh, new? Oh, girl, that's just, let's say hello. Let, let's say hello. <laughs> This is. Let's say hello. It's look, so look, baby look at this outfit. Look at this. <laughs> it's interesting because I used to work at Target. <laughs> Not a paid sponsor. <laughs> anyway, let me put her back. This is Pauline. <laughs> it's going to be weird when I change my hair because <laughs> it's just going yeah. to be weird. She's going to. Yeah, she's just going to be. Okay, well, I'm glad we were able to check in that way. And here's the thing. Why did we check in the way we did and looking at what's one thing that went well for us? When we are depressed, we don't really think of what's going well for us, right? Mm -hmm. We right. don't. So that's a tip. Therapy talk tip. Therapy talk tip. Yes. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Tammy, what do we have going on today? Yes, so today we are going to talk about major depressive disorder. We're going to talk about what are some signs, what are some causes. We're going to look at some treatment options and hey, also like what what could help you out. So Pauline, can you move us into what is it? What is MDD? What is MDD? So major depression, according to the creme de la creme of mental health disorders, um, major depression is um, the most common features of depressive disorders include the presence of sadness, emptiness, irritable mood that is accompanied by somatic and cognitive changes that impact your ability to function. So somatic meaning physical and cognitive meaning your thoughts. Um, MDD is the most classic in depressive disorders and has distinct episodes of at least two weeks maybe longer for some. So when we say episodes, this is a fancy way of saying that type of depression is going to last for a certain amount of time. You know, so think of an episode like as in you're watching an episode of one of your favorite shows and you push play, it ends. That's the end of that episode. So that's what this is referring to. And just like episodes that you watch, certain episodes are 20 to 30 minutes or maybe 40 minutes. Or 50 minutes. Like ours. <laughs> <laughs> it's different. <laughs> so, yes. Tammy, I'm looking at you with your nice, bright pink and that lipstick that's going with it. You look like a woman of facts. Do you have a any? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let's run through some facts. So, 17.3 million adults in the U.S. have at least one major depressive episode. Remember what Pauline said about episodes. Um, depression is also the leading cause of disability in the U.S. among people between 15 and 44. Not limited to, but it's the leading cause. And women are twice as likely as men to be diagnosed with depression. Pauline, what do you think about those facts? Those are impressive facts. And I'm wondering what, why there's a difference between male and female Um I wonder if that's reporting, you know, maybe more women report it and more men like maybe suffer in silence, I wonder. Mm, mm, yes. And I bet you depression 
just culturally and um, different parts of the world are experienced differently, you know? So if we're only using, let's say, the criteria that's in this book, then we're going to miss how other cultures describe or experience depression. I like that. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, let's talk about some causes. Causes. Um, yeah. Causes of depression can range from like response to stressful life events. So we deal with stresses differently um, and we don't necessarily consider everything stressful. So different people will experience it differently. I'm kind of repeating myself there. Um, environmental factors. So for example, would be childhood experiences and so on. Um, and so it's, it's interesting, but things that we do experience during childhood can continue on into our, our adult lives. And if we don't catch on to it, it's never going to be treated and outcomes can be negative. Genetic and psychological factors. This means that a family member who um, has a diagnosis of MDD um, will have a, or knowing a family member or yes, having a family member with MDD, you being around them, depending on however long that is, your risk, risk factor in developing MDD as well is anywhere from two to four times higher than others who don't have um, family member or family members with MDD. Can you inherit major depression? Yes. Um, approximately 40%. Now, just because you inherit it doesn't mean you're going to develop major depression. The way genetic works, science and all of that, there's going to be environmental factors, psychological factors that turn that gene on um, and it will manifest. And of course, stressful life events. So there's going to be a number of components, um, but the your job is to pay attention to it and see like, hey, like I have a chance to, ve to develop um, major depression because of whatever reason um, and so on. So we're going to talk about symptoms here in a little bit. One more thing, neuroticism, which is one of the big five personality traits, is typically defined as a tendency toward anxiety, depression, self-doubt, and other negative feelings. Um, and then um, another cause would be medical conditions. Now, there's many causes for depression. So we just talked about a few here um, for you guys. Let's look at symptoms. Symptoms can include, but not limited to, appetite changes, sleep problems, weight issues, isolation, feelings of hopelessness, guilt, increased fatigue and pain, concentration issues, indecisiveness, Lack of interest or pleasure in activities that you used to enjoy. That's a very um, good indicator. Yeah. Restlessness, um, slowing down of thought, and a reduction of physical movement. Um, the best way or good um, imagery I can give y'all would be Eeyore, the character from, what is that? Uh, <laughs> Winnie the Pooh. Yes, Eeyore, definitely always moving slow, um, talking slowly. De that's um, a depressed character. And then if these symptoms go on long enough, you're going to develop at some point having suicidal thoughts um, and also homicidal thoughts, which is where you having thoughts about harming someone else. Um, and that's what I have. And these are... Symptoms will look different for people, um, but we thought it would be a good idea to at least put some out there and you can look at it. Yeah. So um, we're going to move on to treatment. So uh, different depression disorders have their own distinct set of symptoms, but there are common ones. So we're going to just address just a few of them. So one is psychotherapy. We can't go through a, th uh, a therapy session is what I almost said, Pauline. We can't go through an episode without talking about therapy. So psychotherapy, including CBT, which is cognitive behavioral therapy, can be very effective. Medications and antidepressants. Um, complementary health approaches, including uh, 
stress reduction, relaxation techniques, meditation, things like that can definitely um, be a way to treat it. Um, the next two I'm going to mention are, pre are for pretty severe cases. So um, electroconvulsive therapy, which is also known as ECT. Now, ECT is used for severe cases when other treatments are unsuccessful. Um, but ECT is not for everybody. So please don't go to your doctor and say, hey, therapy talks that I need ECT. We did not say that. Sure didn't. Um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm just go ahead and just add on to what Tammy's. We did not. <laughs> did not, no. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's pretty rare to have that treatment done. Um, and something Pauline and I are going to have an episode coming up soon is, is TMS, which is transcranial magnetic stimulation, who I said that without stumbling. That was a miracle, uh, which is also reserved for depression, which has been very treatment resistant. So those are just a few. Um, so let's talk about how do we handle it? What do, how do we cope? Right? So gratitude journaling is huge. So like what, like how Pauline talked about at the beginning of our episode is like, Hey, what's going good for you? So let's be grateful. Gratitude can go a long way. Um, an idea that I had is, if you struggle like I do to remember like the good things in life, sometimes I know we get so focused on like the negative. Why don't you every day write down something you're grateful for? So it doesn't even have to be like dear journal or whatever, just write down. So, you know, write down today. I wrote down April. I actually have one of these in my bedroom. No, before I go to bed, I'll write something up. So number one, what are you grateful for April 1st? What are you grateful for April 2nd? And then it's so much fun to go back later and look at those things. That's pretty cool. I like that. Um, that's very a, like straightforward. It is. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. It's been fun to already look back on. I've only been doing it for a couple months, but it's been fun to look back on. And it's super simple stuff. Like today, I'm thankful for the sunshine. It, it, we're not asking you to journal your life story right before bed or any other time, but just something simple that just like, oh yeah, you know, take a deep breath and just be, be grateful. Um, affirmations in, in that same category, like say, I am good enough. I am successful. Yes. I am a good person. Things like that. There's a lot of things and affirmations out there you can look up. Exercise and yoga. We're definitely going to mention that. Music is huge. Music can definitely transform you and help you get in a better mood. Um, and spending time with people. If you're isolating and you're alone and you're, you know, not answering your phone or going to social functions, you know, spend time with people that can definitely help you cope with what you're going through and talk to people and then grounding exercises and there's a lot of stuff out there on that um last week we had great some great grounding exercises that we mentioned in our anxiety video so please check that out but those are just some very basic coping skills um if you know of some good coping skills please write it down below we would love to hear from you and share the wealth with all of our therapy talkers yes remember depression is treatable you do not have to suffer. You don't have to suffer alone. So if you found this video helpful, please hit like and subscribe. We'd love to have you as a subscriber. And remember to come back next week as the best is yet to come. Bye. Bye.